This hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam is masha Allah so famous subhanallah we all remember this by heart i wonder for what purpose do we remember this it's reported in sahih muslim and tirmidhi and through different chains of narrations so many different narrations that its authenticity is absolutely certain the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said the jews were divided into 71 sects and the christians were divided into 72 sects and we all know and my ummah will be divided into 73 sects and all of them will be in jahannam but one in the version of tirmidhi the sahaba asked which will be that one saved sect from jahannam and the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam replied al jama the one in majority are the one that sticks together al jama now This hadith is literally among the most controversial hadith of Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Subhanallah it does not befit the tongue to speak these words that a hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam is controversial but it is the truth. Every sect in Islam considers themselves to be the rightly guided and the one that follows the true sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Now first of all What we all together need to realize is that by consensus this hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam is a prophecy and not a command. Yes, this hadith is a prophecy that has actually come true. Mashallah, we can see today that so many prophecies of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam one after other has come true and this is one of them. Just like the statements that zina and alcohol and immorality will be on the increase and all of this has come true but what is a command of islam what is a command and quran says in surah al imran chapter number 3 ayah number 103 it says and hold fast to the rope of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the quran and do not be divided among yourselves do not be divided among yourselves that's a that's a hukum of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala now here is the command of allah and this prophecy of prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam How do we reconcile this? Well, today a time has come that the ummah is so divided that nothing can prevent this ummah from shattering into pieces except that if we realize this hukm of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through the will of Allah. Hold fast to the rope of Allah and be not divided among yourselves. This ayah actually is a solution to the problems prophesied in the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Wallahi if we could realize this now most importantly what i want to share with you now open your ears and listen what i want to share with you is this point notice what rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said please note these words clearly and remember it rasulullah said my ummah my ummah will be divided into 73 sects my ummah he sallallahu alaihi wasallam clearly affirms that all of these divisions among muslimin is his ummah he said my ummah will be divided into 73 sects now when rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam recognizes each of these 73 sects as his ummah then who are you to call them a kafir this takfir problem in this ummah is so so much it is spread like epidemic subhanallah and yes he sallallahu alaihi wasallam calls them my ummah And then he says that 72 of my ummah will be in jahannam and one will be jannati yet the 72 jahannami divisions also remains his ummah now every division of this ummah claims that they are the one saved division now i am not into the discussion of what is the saved sect okay but my point over here is that every section of this ummah is from the ummah of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam and Please give up this takfiri problem. Give up this takfir problem. And here comes the most important point. Now open your ears again. Another important point I want to share with you. Very important. Each of these 73 divisions of this ummah have rights on each other. Yes. Remember the hadith of Muslim, Sahih Muslim? 
remember the hadith of Sahih Muslim and if you do not remember then please memorize this hadith I ask you by Allah to memorize this hadith because this hadith is the solution to the problems of the world every Muslim has six rights on other Muslim number one when he greets you reply to his salam number two when he invites you accept his invitation three when he seeks advice give him sincere advice four when he sneezes and praises Allah say Allah. may Allah have mercy on you subhanallah and we have brothers who curse their brothers because they do not share the same idea and right number five when he falls sick visit him number six when he dies attend his janaza the ummah needs to realize today that each of these 73 divisions of the ummah of muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam deserve their due rights from you do not arrogantly belittle your brothers thinking that they are jahannami and you are jannati because ibn al qayyim says in zad al maad and i'm quoting ibn al qayyim here and he says it is possible that a person of innovation, Ahlul Bid'a, he said, a person of Ahlul Bid'a might get a higher rank in Jannah based on his sincerity than a person on Haqq based on his insincerity. Because Allah has the right to forgive. Yes, Rasulullah said that let the Bid'ati have their seat in Jahannam. But Bid'a is not Shirk. And Allah can forgive some individual people based on their other deeds and their sincerity. And we all know this. I am not at all saying that we cannot debate or we cannot discuss our ideological differences. But what I am saying is, yes we can debate and discuss our differences of opinions and we can choose our sides and if we find our side to be on Haqq, then try to convince them who do not assume to be on Haqq. But still we can stay united. Still we can stay united and we have to stay united because it is the hukum of Allah. Allah says do not be divided, hold tightly to the rope of Allah and do not be divided among yourselves. You see, a lot of people fail to realize that unity doesn't mean uniformity. Unity doesn't mean everybody has to be the same. Unity doesn't mean that everybody has to wear white clothes. Unity doesn't mean that everybody have to look the same. Unity doesn't mean that everybody has to share the same theology, same idea and... No, no, no. What does unity mean? What is unity except that every Muslim fulfills the right of other Muslim? What is unity except that every Muslim loves for himself what he loves for his Muslim brother? We can discuss our differences and there should be no problem in that as long as it is done in a proper manner. You see, this Ummah is weak and we do not even have one Khalifa to unite us under one Fiqh. Now either we learn to unite among ourselves, by ourselves or let Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala appoint a leader over us to oppress us and humiliate us and cause so much fitna till we have the blood of our own brothers on our own hands. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. May Allah protect us. May Allah unite this ummah under the banner of La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. What else do we need? Unity needs one unifying factor and we have the and we have that unifying factor which is of the highest degree. What is higher on the scale than La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah? One brother is saying La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah and believing in it. Other brother is saying La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah and believing in it. Yet we fight with each other on small issues. Subhanallah. We need to learn to cope up with the differences of opinion. The Sahaba used to have the differences of opinion. And I'm not saying that uh, the Sahaba used to give up their position because some other Sahaba said some other thing. No, the Sahaba used to be used to be strict on their positions. They used to believe what they believed and you should believe what you believe. And you should try to convince those whom you think that they are not on Haqq. But that does not mean you should belittle others. That does not mean that you should call them by names. That's all I have to say. If this is one thing that I can make you understand, then wallahi my life is successful. My life is successful. 
May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us hikmah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us understanding. May Allah unite us back under one banner of La ilaha illa Muhammad Rasulullah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us understand the importance of unity. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us understand the importance of unity in this ummah. May Allah protect us from the leaders who oppress us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from the rulers who cause fitna inside our homes and cause animosity inside the heart of one believer for another believer. زمیں پر بھیجا رب نے محمد کے ہاتھوں ایک رسالت صحابہ کے ہاتھوں بھی تھا ایک رسالت ہی پہنچا ہم تک بٹ کر فرقوں میں تم آج کھو دیے ہو اپنی عزت پکار رہی ہے وادی اے فلسطین تمہیں سن سکو گر تم اس کی قول وحدت اللہ اللہ